professional proprietary traders know how to enter and exit with precision. And they do this by having different strategies that align with varying market conditions. In this video, our head of trader development, Jeff Holden, shares three trading strategies with real world examples of specific entries and exits directly from our trading floor. I'm Mike Bellafuri, and we're one of the top proprietary trading firms located in New York City and proud to have developed numerous seven and even eight figure per year traders. We hope you discover this is the top YouTube channel to help you grow your trading account. So today we're gonna to go into some trading secrets. We're gonna talk specifically about how to enter trades and exit trades the way we do as pro traders. There are a couple things that are really important that we'll cover. We're gonna actually break through three trades that we talked about in our 11 a.m. meeting yesterday. Uh, we do an 11 a.m. meeting every day for our desk. We talk through specific trades. We talk through the specific entries. We talk through a specific exits and why. And we had this really unique example where a trader came in and shared a trade that he made. First off, when we trade these, they're on in-play stocks. So we focus on stocks that are in play. In play is eight plus um, fundamental catalyst, significant technical setup. So as we talk about setups, we ranked this as like an eight plus setup. Um, it was also trading into a really important technical support area, which we'll get into as we get into the video about why this area was so important and, and what trades came from it. But the most important thing here is this is specific entry and exit rules. And this is how pro traders think through their trading. And this is really how they simplify it to kind of take some of the pressure off. So let's jump right into it. So yesterday, this is September 7th, CHPT had earnings, big gap down. We scored the earnings as a negative eight out of 10. So we thought they were significantly negative. And then we scored the technical setup it was gapping to 52 week lows. Um, you know, we had that technical setup as a negative eight and a half as well. So um, we're not covering why we're scoring it um, or why how the how the setups being scored. This is specific to entries and exits, but we are going to break through those three trades that we want to cover. We're going to start by looking at a specific trade that traders on the desk make a lot. This is a pre-market low break. So when you have a significant negative catalyst and you have an important technical setup and you have a defined pre-market low that sets up for you. There's a pre-market low break trade that you can make if the volume is good enough. So let's get into the charts and we're gonna take a look at this trade and we're gonna go bar by bar really quickly through it. All right, so we have the earnings after hour and then we have this grind down. You had the, this break of the prior day low. So this is the after hours earnings and then you had the break of the low. You can see that this is becoming a momentum selling style tape. There are people who just wanna get out of this stock. Um, it tries to lift here, you get a nice retracement and it's down. This isn't the trade we're talking about though. We're just setting the trade up for us. So you can see all the momentums to the downside. And then we get this pre-market low that gets put in a little bit before the open. Well, we can use that as an opportunity. So given the setup, given the catalyst, given what we have here, we can look for this pre-market low break trade. If it's an important enough level, we will take the pre-market low break. So let's show exactly what happened and we will pause it to talk about our specific entries for this. Okay, so we're coming right into the open and we're looking for a pre-market low break. If we get that pre-market low break, we're gonna enter the position and we're gonna have our stop, right? We can put it right above $6, so 602. That can be our stop. Okay, we'll walk this forward and we get the test of pre-market low, but it doesn't look like it breaks right there. So we don't have an entry for our position. Then we get this break. So as soon as we get the break, we're actually gonna take the trade. Again, our stop. So we're entering the trade somewhere in the 583 range. To make it easy, let's go 580, right? So we're gonna enter 580 and your stop six. So you're risking 20 cents right there. You know you're risking 20 cents. We get a quick pop up against us, but it doesn't stop us out. And then they sell it right back down. For aggressive traders, they're gonna be very, very aggressive and they're gonna add on that stuff because now you have a stuff candle and it didn't even take out that really important level. So we have really more conviction in this trade. Now let's think about the reasons to sell. We have our hard stop in place, but let's think about how are we gonna exit this trade? Because we get this really, really nice, fast down move. And there are a couple ways to exit it. One way is using a two minute bar break. 
Another way is using, you know, just kind of pure overextension to the downside. But I like to use, and I think in this case, we're going to talk about using the two minute bar break. So we want to see a two, or two bar break. So this is one minute bars. So a two bar break would be the prior high. So we're trailing it down as it goes. This is a way to exit a momentum trade because you don't really know where it's going to stop. We know that five is an important level. Why is five such an important technical level for any stock? And it's because stocks are marginable above $5. In addition, some funds cannot hold stocks that are below $5. So we would expect five to potentially be defended, especially if it gets there in a hurry. Right now we see this little pause and then continuation. And again, our stop is above the high of two bars ago, that two bar break. And we get this push down. We're getting closer to that five level. So we're being very careful. We get a little flush below. And then we get a pop back above. But it hasn't taken out that two bars yet. And then we get a pause. And finally, we get that two bar break occurring right here. So we would take our position off. It might have occurred right there too. Same principle. Anyway, we captured what? Uh, 70 cents and we were risking 20. So two and a half to one roughly. I'll take that pretty much every single day. Um, really, really simple, straightforward trade. For our next trade, we're gonna talk about a reversal trade from here. We know that five is an important level. We actually scored it a nine and a half out of 10. We scored at such an important level, again, because stocks under $5 are not marginable, so we would expect five to get defended. We would also expect it to get defended because certain funds cannot hold stocks that are under $5. So you have to be very careful about when something's trading into that $5 level and see how it's going to respond. You don't have to buy at five and say, my stop's low of day. You can actually wait to observe the price action into that level, which is a really important thing. Not enough traders identify a level and then observe the price action at that level. They identify a level and then they just jump in when, when the price gets close to that level. Well, that's jumping in without really getting the information. What we're doing in the trade that we're talking about, this reversal trade that does set up for us, and, and we'll break through the specifics about how to enter and how to exit that trade. What we're waiting is we know that the price is coming into an important level. We're just observing how it's going to respond to that level. And depending on how it does, we can take one or a couple different trades. So we get this little pop up. And what we're paying attention to now is where did it find some selling? Well, it found some selling right at this like 508, 509 area. Let's call it 510 just to be a little safe. You see that little pause there. It was trying to lift. It couldn't. Finally, it lifted through. Again, I'm just watching where, how is it going to, how is it going to respond if it pulls back to that level? That's what I'm thinking. I'm not thinking about five. Five is where my risk would be against, but I'm thinking, how do I let it come back to me to enter this position? So when we get this really quick flush below the level and we rebid it immediately, and by the level, I'm talking about that 510 area, 508, 509, 510. I would imagine on the tape, and you see the volume coming in too, I would imagine the tape, it's like this really nasty looking flush, but then you see the bidder step right back above 508. That's where I'm entering my position. And I'm gonna enter it with a stop below, two cents below the low. So I'm talking 496 or somewhere in there. So in this trade, I'm like risking like 10, 13 cents, something in there. Let's call it 13. And what I'm going to look for is immediately a rebid. If it starts to dance around here and rolls over anymore, I'm probably out of the trade. But I know because of this, this area where there was a seller and then they flushed it back down and now there's a buyer, that's an area that I can enter a bounce trade. So we'll play it out. Okay, we get a little bit of a pause. I would expect some sort of up move. Okay, there's the up move. That's great. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, I can even move my stop up to almost break even if I want to or trade it a little tighter. And then we get to move all the way to VWAP. Well, that's really good. Okay, now I'm looking for some sort of blow off, sort of continuation, something to get me out of that trade. And this is an extension. I'm going to exit this trade into this extension right here. Another way that you could do it if you really want to is you can trail using the 9 EMA. So some traders will just trail using the 9 EMA, which is right here. If you get a close below the 9 EMA, they'll exit the position. 
I think that you should always exit when it extends away from the 9 EMA, but let's just play it forward and see how you would, what would happen. So it bounced off the 9 EMA, so you're holding it for more. And then finally, you do get a close below the 9 EMA. You're waiting for that close. When that close occurs, you exit your position. Ironically, it's about the same price as when we exited up here. That happens a lot. If you exit into an extension, a lot of times you get more extension, but if you're trailing your stop, you're gonna wind up at about the same price. So just let it happen, let it set up. If you notice, we got a really nice move up here. That was a really straightforward trade that using very simple entry rules of testing back to a previous level of importance and really simple exit rules, which was either the overextension or trailing with the nine EMA, you would have really walked into something nice. What mattered so much in this trade and why you could trail using that momentum 9 EMA is specifically because of the type of buying we would expect off of that $5 overextension reversal. So we had an overextension into $5, you had a quick up move and that pullback. We would expect there to be a buy program all the way up. And so when we get that buy program, we expect that that buy program is going to be an aggressive set of buyers that is going to make it ride the 9 EMA all the way higher. Using those momentum exits is important to do in momentum type trades. This was a momentum style trade. We can play it forward a little bit. And what's going to be interesting and what I like is now we're going to look for the potential of another trade that sets up a little bit later. So we're going to let the price action keep going. And it went all the way back up to the highs. You know, you could argue that, oh, I should have held for longer. But the reality is this stock is in play. It's going to give you a lot of different trading opportunities. What we're covering in this video are three very distinct, very straightforward entry and exit criteria. So let's wait and talk about how to enter on a wedge break. So we're going to get a wedge that starts to develop and we're going to watch it develop together. The way I define a wedge is it needs to have, and you can sort of see it starting to set up here. You want to see a series of lower highs, but then you also want to see the lows be relatively flat. What's super interesting about this example is we have this area that acted as resistance, and now we're looking for it to act as support. So we're going to call that $5.70 area right there as support. So we can even draw lines on our charts. So we're gonna draw a trend line here that can act as support. And then we'll start to draw a trend line for resistance. So we have this trend line as support and we have this downtrend line starting to show up as resistance. So we're gonna look for how the price action responds. And it looks like it kind of breaks there, but if you wanna take that, that's fine. I don't like it very much, but you know I think it kind of needs to build out a little bit more. And I don't like it mainly because I just don't think it's built out enough. You know, you want to really let this setup build out for you. And we're talking about a building out for, you know, about 15, 20 minutes at this point. But look at the size of the move. You know, stocks need time to reset. So this is an important concept to make sure you get right. And look, it's holding below. So even if you entered that position, you should be out of it by now. It didn't do exactly what you wanted it to do. What's interesting is then we get this test down into the support area. Okay, what, what's going to happen now? And depending on what happens, that's going to tell us a lot about this information, about what type of trade we have. And again, we're looking for a trend line break to the upside or a wedge break pattern. And we'll talk about the specifics of entry. And I would argue there are cl it's a close above um, that downtrend line. And then our stop would be below this low right here. And what we would target would be, I think, the width of this move. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, we get this up move. And it looks like we're going to, okay, now we've actually broken the trend line. You can see this is actually, this, this bar looks like it's going to go lower and it repaints itself. That's where it's a, a, a red bar all the way down and a green bar all the way up. This actually repaints itself as well, where it's a green bar all the way up and a red bar all the way down. You don't want to look for that situation. But for this long, this is exactly what you want to see. So you can enter, and let's say we enter right here, that would be like 585 or something like that. Your stops below here, 570, let's call it 570, so you're risking 15 cents. What's the size of this move? Well, that's, uh, let's call it six, 
down to 570. So that's 30 cents roughly that you're looking. So we're risking 15, trying to make at least 30. Let's see how this plays out. Okay, we get that. Oh, what I really like here and I'd like to bring attention to is the volume increasing. As long as this volume stays increasing here on this break, we're going to really look to stay with this position and see if it'll give us a little bit more. Okay, that volume's looking good. We get that move up to six. That's great. We want to see if we can get a little bit more. Again, we're in from this 575 area or something like that, or 580 area. So let's see. We want to see at least 610, and we'll see if we get maybe up to 620, something in there. Okay, we finally got that consolidation and it looked like it was gonna drop out and it got up there. Okay, now we're gonna use one of our momentum exits. And as soon as the momentum dies, then we're gonna be out of the trade. With our exit right here, you see that up move and that back down move. And we're, at a, we're above a, a two to one risk reward so we can take the trade off and we're done. We're done. We just made three really good trades on an in-place stock and you've used really specific entry and exit criteria. That's how simple this can be. If you find a really good in-place stock, you can walk into more opportunities. And if you have really even decent rules of execution for entry and exit, and pay attention to what we talked about. We talked about seeing where the bar is closing. We talked about letting things come to you when you're trying to make certain types of trades. We talked about what specifics you're going to want to see with the candles repainting themselves in, in certain circumstances. If you study these entry and exit criteria, you're going to walk into more trades on in-play names and you're going to have a better structure around how to execute them consistently. So you're an active trader, not doing as well as you want, not doing as well as you deserve, and you just can't figure out why you can't become profitable no matter how hard you try. Well, let me show you why. This is your competition, the traders in this room. This room right here is full of elite traders, some of whom are making seven and even eight figures a year. In fact, our top guys have made nearly 20 million each in net trading profits in a single year. Let's head to my office so I can share more. So you're probably used to seeing videos of lavish trader lifestyles, trading gurus, trading off of the laptop for an hour a day, heck, maybe even 15 minutes a day and then them relaxing on some secluded beach for the rest of the day. Well, all I can tell you is that our traders train like pro athletes. They live and breathe the markets and are continually working on their trading skills because at our firm, that's what we found it really takes to make it in this game. I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder and managing partner of SMB Capital, one of the world's top proprietary trading firms located in Midtown Manhattan. And we're always looking for trading talent to hire and develop. And not just to trade in-house on our desk, but also to trade from their own home, entirely using our firm's capital. And we have numerous traders doing just that, allowing them to make upwards of seven figures trading the firm's capital without risking their own money. But to even get a shot at something like that, you need to have the right training. That's why we're doing a new free online presentation in which we share how you can get an interview with SMB to become an in-house or remote trader, trading firm capital without risking yours and gaining access to all of our firm's coaching and resources. And the best part, you don't have to be a profitable trader yet. In fact, we prefer to mold profitable traders with our methods and our techniques. That's why we have just three simple criteria that can earn anyone an interview. We're looking for highly ambitious and determined traders who fit our culture first and foremost. So if you believe that could be you, sign up for the free one hour online presentation by clicking the link that's in your top right corner of your screen now.